Hallelujah. And we worship you today. And everybody said. And everybody said. And everybody said. Oh, yeah. Give him a shout. Come on. Oh. Hallelujah. I think you can do better than that. Should we give him a shout? Come on, a victory shout. Here we go. You know, I remember Reinhard Bonnke once said, he said, dignity is not a fruit of the spirit. Some of you, uh, uh, you know, we've got to lose our dignity and get a little bit undignified. David did. He said, I will become even more undignified than this. And he danced with all of his might. And uh, we're certainly doing that this morning. Praise God. I'm excited anyway. This is family, like you said, Jesse. And um, to me, this is, this is like coming home. And uh, so thank you for having me, Max, and Pastor Paul. We love you. We adore you. And um, the leadership team here, uh, Pastor Alex, Nancy, we love you. And uh, Jesse and Hannah, thank you. Good to see you, Rachel. How you doing? And uh, the team, wow, what a, what a church. God is building his church. He's, he's building a church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. We're moving forward. We're not going backwards. Amen. And uh, I send you love from my gorgeous bride, Beth. And uh, she's out at another church this morning. She works with Compassion, the charity. And uh, so she's the partnerships manager for the North. That means she meets with lots of different pastors and leaders ensuring that these dear children can be sponsored uh, holistically and looked after uh, in every aspect, spirit, soul, body, and uh, they can learn the Word of God. So she's out with a local church. My kids are at their aunties, and we're doing church at 4 o'clock today. So I'm um, going from here straight into our service to shake them up in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, we, we pioneered the church five years ago. And uh, we've come through the pandemic. By the grace of God, we're still standing strong. And we are building. We're building forward. We're just building a coffee shop at the moment. Who knows? You've got to have co coffee for the anointing. <laughs> Amen. Well, at least I do. You know, it's six in the morning anyway. But um, it gets me started. But anyway, no, so we, we, we're, on a, we're on a business park. We're, we're on an old woolen mill. And we're refurbishing this woolen mill. There's about 20 businesses on site, all of which don't have a cafe. So we thought, well, it's a great opportunity, so we're building a cafe. We had this great idea, which has turned into really, really hard work. <laughs> Who knows, when you have a good idea, you, you, you don't know what follows next. <laughs> so we're rolling up our sleeves and we're getting busy building that. Praise God. Anyway, I'll stop. Is this keyboard on? Can we put it on? Olu? Oh, I want to sing your song. And uh, I didn't do this in the first service, but you know me, I'm quite random. And uh, yeah. so uh, I'll put it on here. If, I, if something happens here, one of the, should I put it on there? No, I won't put it there. I've learned this amazing new song a couple of weeks ago, and it's an elevation song. Oh, this is not on. Praise God. Oh, there we go. How do I do my phone here? I love the lyrics from this. It goes, I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling. On the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean, I need you now to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my
That's in my spirit at the moment. Oh, because he's the same God as he was back then. And he is the same God now. And if he can open the Red Sea back then, he can open the sea of your life right now and get you through whatever you're going through in this moment, in this hour, in your circumstance, in your family, in your health, in your business. He'll provide all your needs. Amen. All right. Well, I'm not going to keep you too long today, but I do want to share the Word of God with you this morning. I've been a Christian 25 years. I was saved out of a life of heroin addiction and alcoholism, shaken to the core, overnight delivered, set free 25 years ago in my ex-girlfriend's bedroom in London City. Sounds dodgy, but it wasn't. Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up and he shook me to the core. I tell you what, and uh, I had a revelation of who he was and the rest is history. 
and here I am. And uh, so I love his church, I love his presence, I love everything to do with the Lord. I will give the rest of my days to serve him, to love him, and to build his glorious church. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it even entered into your heart the things which God has prepared for you because he loves you. But he will reveal it by his spirit, the Bible says. Anyway, that's another message. Are you ready? Yeah. Turn to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. We're going to look at 11 verses. And I'm going to launch into a few thoughts. And I'm fired up. I'm excited this morning, as you can tell. I won't keep you too long, like I said. But at least 20 minutes to 30 minutes to say what I need to say. Here we go. Let me get my glasses on first. These things happen when you get to the age of 50. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he, Jesus, stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he, Jesus, got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, that's Simon Peter which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And Jesus sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Can you imagine Jesus sitting next to you in your boat, teaching the multitudes, hearing those amazing words that are coming out of his mouth. Oh, my gosh. What an experience. Verse 4. Then, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Simon, launch out, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and he said, Master, we've toiled all night and we've caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and the net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Oh, depart from me. I'm a sinful man, O Lord. And he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, from now on, everybody say from now on, <laughs> you will catch men, you will catch men, you will catch people. So when they had brought their boats to the land, look at this, they forsook all, not just a bit, not half, but they forsook all. Some of you are still clinging on to yesterday, but they forsook all. Some of you are still clinging on to opinions, but they forsook all. Some of you are still a, a clinging on to what they think, what they said, what happened, but they forsook all and they followed him. They followed Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. The title of my message this morning in these short few moments that I've got with your church is called From Now On. From now on, come on, let's pray. Father, we love you. And we honor you. You are worthy. You are worthy. Lord, you say the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Lord, I pray you'd anoint these lips of clay that they might propel the truth of your word. Lord, I pray that you'd shape lives to the core, bring people out of a career into their calling today. Bring people into a realignment of what really matters so that we can forsake all and follow you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
Have your way, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Here we find Jesus just days into his earthly ministry. At this point in time, he's only called three of the disciples. And even they're not fully committed. Even they're not fully with him. But this is Jesus just days into launching out into the deep himself to let down his net for a catch. And he's got three and a half short years to do what he needs to do on planet Earth to ensure that a legacy and a continuum is happening for the kingdom of God. To pour his life into 12 young men who would become apostles and only God knows what <laughs> to shape their region and to shape their town. So Jesus is focused on the mission. He's focused on the job. Isn't it just like us to get so sidetracked sometimes and focus on all the wrong things or get distracted with what really matters? But Jesus, he's got a job to do and he set his sights and he's moving. He's moving forward. Only just a couple of weeks previous to this event, um, Jesus has left his own hometown of Nazareth and he's been rejected when he stood up in the synagogue and he said the beautiful words of Isaiah chapter 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Whoa. And the opening, opening of prisoners, a, 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 a opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He'd stood up only a few weeks previous and he'd said those words and then he said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Not yesterday, but today, I'm going to bring the revelation of the word of God into your midst now. And when he did that, he shook people to the core who had known him all his life and they tried to kick him out of his hometown on the first day of his ministry. Nice first day at the office, huh? And they tried to throw him off the brow of a hill. Hey, don't let rejection stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Let rejection carry you to a new direction. Never try to fight the tide against you. Surf the wave. Surf the wave into your destiny. And that's what he did. Jesus is flowing. He's come out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. Nobody's ever witnessed before what was happening amongst them. This is God in flesh. This is God come down from heaven in front of them, doing great exploits. But he can't get anything done in Nazareth. So he just moves down the road to Capernaum. And 20 miles down the road, people are set free, mags. People are delivered in Jesus' name. And people are, are blessed by the Lord. Hey, never let your environment dictate to you what God can do in your life. Sometimes you've got to shift and move to an environment that is conducive to what you carry. Some people get so discouraged when people don't respond. Well, all you need to do is just lift your sights a little bit and get moving like Jesus did. And maybe a few miles down the track, you'll see great things break out. So Jesus has come to the lake of Genesaret. And Genesaret is another name for Galilee, the lake of Galilee. This is a very famous lake in biblical history. So he's come down to the lake of Genesaret. And he stood by the lake. And whenever, whenever God stands somewhere, always remember, he's not there by happenstance. When God comes into the equation, he's always ready to do something. Because church, here's the deal. People at the back, <laughs> good morning. We, see, we, serve, we serve a God of ulterior motives. What's your name, sir? Donald, Don, good morning, Donald. Good to see you, bro. God is a God of ulterior motives.
God's always down the track, Donald, way down the track of your life. He's the beginning and he's the end. And he's a God of specific purpose. So he's always got a purpose for Donald in his tomorrow, in Donald's family, in his marriage, for tomorrow, in his business, in every detail of Donald's life. There's always a God of ulterior motives standing on the scene, working in the unseen, ready to catapult Donald and whoever's attached to him, if they'll come with him, into his destiny and into his future. And it's the same with every one of us in the room. Jesus is at the lake of Genesaret. He's at your lake today. He's at the place where the river flows. Yeah. And he's standing at the lake of Genesaret. And he's there to do something very, very powerful. Because remember, he's there to ensure that legacy and continuum is going to happen. He's there to ensure that he can pass on who he is and what he carries to the next generation. To ensure that the kingdom of God, are you with me? Moves forward. Somebody say move forward. Say I want to move forward God. I'm not going to move back. I'm going to move forward. In Jesus name. The Bible says that God's thoughts are not your thoughts. What's your name? Tommy? Tommy, God's thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are his ways your ways. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are his thoughts higher than your thoughts. And his ways higher than your ways. But here's the cool thing. Tommy, it, it says that his ways come down. And they land in our consciousness because he gives us the mind of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 2.16, you can read that. It says that he gives us the mind of Christ. In other words, he, could, he causes his church, his children, his sons and daughters to think like him. To think like God. Whoa! That's, that's pretty incredible, don't you think? So Jesus is at the lake of Genesaret thinking like God because he is God. But he's there to impart God's narrative into this region and into this place. And he's there to shake some young men to the core, to call them out of their career into their calling. And he's going to do it in a, in a miraculous way. You know, when God wants to call you out of where you are, he'll do it in a way that is unusual. To say to you that I'm God. And beside me, there is no other. You know, God doesn't throw around miracles, church, like confetti. Some of us think God throws miracle, miracles around willy-nilly like confetti and doesn't really think about it. No, that's not the God that I serve. God always gives us a miracle for purpose. Everybody say purpose. His miracles are poured out for purpose. For purpose in our life. For you and then your family, and it's there to, to change history. He pours out miracles to change history. What's your name? Peter. Dude, what a great name. <laughs> the Rock. You are the Rock, brother. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Father, I thank you for Peter. I thank you. You're going to pour out miracles on his life. You're going to shake him to the core. Thank you for his destiny. Let's pray for him. Come on, pray in the spirit. Thank you for Peter, Lord. Make him a rock. He is a rock in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that things would just burst at the seams for him in every dimension. North, south, east, west. Financially, economically, spiritually, relationally. Oh God, in every aspect of his life. Lord, I pray you'd keep him strong. And I pray that his destiny would go forward in leaps and bounds. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So God doesn't throw miracles around like confetti. There's always a purpose, Russell, to what he wants to do. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. So he's there by the lake of Genesaret. And Jesus, the word of God, do you want to put verse 2 up again if you can? If you can't, don't worry about it. 
But in verse 2 of that passage of scripture, it says that two boats, two boats were standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. And we know as we read further, we know they're washing their nets because they caught nothing. Sometimes you come up short, don't you? But that doesn't mean that God doesn't want to teach you something or do something next. And some of us, in our failure to produce what we want to produce, give up and go and wash our nets and say, I'm done, God. I've, I, I can, I've done what I'm you know, capable of. And God goes, good, good. Give your nets to me. Give your boat to me. Actually, can I have your boat? We know that Jesus got in the boat. God wants your boat. God wants your mind, your spirit, your soul. He wants your business. He wants your marriage. He wants your children. He wants your future. He wants your decision. He wants your boat. Amen. I'm so excited today. Good morning. What are you drinking? Holy water. Nice. Praise God. That's a good thing. So he... He, he shows up and he asks for the boats that they'd failed in the night before. Amen. You know, the first thought I had about the whole boat situation was that, Pastor Alex, was that boats always do better in water. I know it's not a deep thought, but I think it's a valid thought. Sometimes we draw our lives out of the water. Out of, out of the, the environment where they have their highest and best use. And we live our lives, Peter, on the fringe. We draw our life, a boat out, for whatever reason, offense, can't be bothered. The list goes on. We have our shopping list, you know. And because uh, things don't work out, we put our boats on the shore. But when Jesus comes about, he goes, what's that boat doing on the, what's your life doing on the shore? Why are you on the fringes? Why have you drawn back? Why have you let offense steal from you what I want to do in you in this season? It's time to get your boat back in the water. And I hear the Lord saying, it's time, church, to get your boat back in the water in Jesus' name. Some of you have let people and the enemy cause you to draw back and put your boat in the water, but not today. Not today. It's a new day for the church of Jesus Christ to rise up and put her boat in the water to arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us and we're going to put our boat in the water that it was destined for. Don't you think if God can make a way for Moses through the Red Sea, he can make a way for you? Stop resting your hopes in men and rest your hopes in the Lord and trust him to make a way for you. Stop waiting on the shoreline. Birth the ministry. Birth the business. Birth what's in your heart now in Jesus' name. Time is short. Hallelujah. And right across the earth we can see a shaking going on. And the earth is waiting for the church to rise up and put her boat back in the water. It's time. It's time. It's time. And for some of you it's well overdue. It's time, church. In I sense an urgency, urgency in my spirit for you today. Oh, hallelujah. I'm preaching to myself as much as you today. So, he says to... Oh, I'm nearly finished, by the way. I hope. Some of you are saying, I hope. Uh, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Listen, um, so he says to Simon Peter, he says, launch out a little... From the shoreline. In other words, get back in the boat and detach yourself from a familiar environment on the shore of your failure where you've washed your nets and detach yourself a little. Just a little. And when he detached himself a little, Jesus went about preaching to everyone on the shoreline. He preached the word of God. And no doubt, as Peter heard the word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. No doubt, as Simon Peter and James and John sat next to him, 
in the boat, in the boat, they heard the word being preached. We don't know what was preached, but I bet it was good. And I bet their faith was being stirred. What are you listening to, church? What is resounding in your ears? Tell them I said hi. That's the Lord. He's calling them. He's saying, launch out into the deep in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so put out a little. When they put out a little, Jesus could take them out further. Sometimes you've got to go little by little by little. But there's a process to the journey. The Bible says that we, can I stand on this? The Bible says that we go from glory to glory, from height to height in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. We don't arrive there overnight. You've got to be patient for the things that the Lord wants to do. Just because it's delayed does not mean it's denied. Amen. It's on the way. So put out a little. And then Jesus sees that Peter is ready to launch out into the deep. He can see that he's being encouraged to go further. And then the Lord challenges him with the most magnificent, what's your name? Sam, dude, how are you? And he, he, he challenges him, Sam, with an opportunity. Because he sees that he's put out a little. He's been obedient in the small steps. So now he says, hey, he's been obedient in the small steps. I can take him into a big step now. And I sense the Lord is going to take us into big steps next. Because some of you have been obedient. And then he says to Simon Peter, launch out into the deep and let down what failed you yesterday. Let your nets down for a catch. Because I want to pull something out of the environment that you failed in and I want to show you a miracle in the midst of it. Go back to what you did last night, but go back with me as the centerpiece. Go back with my Holy Spirit. Go back with a word from God that will never, ever fail you. And then Simon Peter, he got a bit negative. He said, you haven't we toiled all night and caught nothing. But here's where it shifts. He said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. There's the turning point. Nevertheless, I'm going to forget my will and I'm going to embrace your will. Not my will, but your will be done. And he let down his net for a catch. Hallelujah. And what came up was absolutely miraculous. My question was, where did the fish come from? Where did the fish come from? They weren't there last night, but they were there to de that day. Anytime Jesus gets in your boat, abundance gets in the boat. Anytime Jesus gets in the boat, everything that you'll ever need gets in your boat. He is blessed with every spiritual blessing. Hallelujah. Put Jesus in your boat. And he let down his net. And he pulled up such a harvest of fish that, that he couldn't even pull them in by himself. What God is just about to do in this church, Max, hear my words, is so big is so great that you ain't going to carry it yourself. You're going to need partners. You're going to need partners. A new level of partnership. And no doubt the boats that were on the shoreline came to Peter's rescue to share in the abundance of harvest that was pulled out of the water that day. So much so that they were all just about to sink. God wants to give you such a level of blessing that your life will sink unless you find partnership. Amen. The weight of his glory, the weight of his goodness, the weight of his power, the weight of his promise is so big that you will not have room enough to contain it. You're going to need people around you. So think bigger, think higher, think wider, think brighter. 
Because I believe that we are headed into days, unprecedented days, where we will see the glory of God poured out in such a way. If you catch this today, the Spirit of God wants to say to you, if, if you can catch this in the Spirit, I will pour out on you. And don't think that I'm here to preach pretty words to you today. This is not Mr. Preacher. This is the Word of God. This is the truth of heaven. And I believe that this is a prophetic word for all of us in the room. If you can receive it today. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Partnership. The next thing that happened, lastly, is that when this happened, they were astonished, Peter. They were astonished. Simon, Peter, James, and John, they're like, oh my, what on earth is just, and no doubt the whole region is astonished as all these fish are flapping about, filling boats, and it is so much blessing that everyone is astonished. So much so that Simon Peter fell down at his feet and repented. He saw such a holy uh, glimpse of heaven he saw such a deep, unprecedented glimpse into the glory of God and how the kingdom of God operates and how it far supersedes anything that this earth can ever throw at you. He saw this manifest in front of his eyes, so much so that he fell down and repented. In other words, he turned 180 degrees away from all he'd ever learned and said, your God he said, this man is God. I need to follow this man. And then Jesus picked him up and he said, hey, stand on your feet. Don't fear. But from now on, you'll catch men. In other words, I'm going to take all that you've learned and I'm going to promote it. I'm going to take all the principles of fishing and of you wrestling something out of its environment that it's used to. Because everyone has an environment, church, everyone in the world. They're in their own environment. And unless you're able to wrestle them out of the environment, they ain't coming with you. We need wisdom. We need the wisdom of the Spirit to know how to wrestle fish, people, out of their environment into the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus said, from now on, from now on, you'll catch men. And I said, so from now on, things will never be the same. Some of you will remember this message for the rest of your life because it's not me speaking to you, it's the Lord. From now on, you will catch men. From now on, you won't worry what they said. From now on, you'll be healed and you'll be delivered. From now on, the prescription medication goes away. From now on, you're going to think higher, brighter, bigger. From now on, the Spirit of God is going to stir a spirit of faith in you, so much so it's going to keep you up at night in a good way. From now on, you're going to move forward. From now on, you're going to birth the ministry that the Lord has given you. From now on, you're going to get your boat back in the rhythm of the kingdom of God. From now on, you will no longer stand or sit on the fringes of what is happening, being a spectator, but you will be right in the heart and you'll be right in the center of making it happen as the Spirit of God blesses you and takes you forward. Give the Lord a hand. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's put verse 11 up and I'm going to finish there. So when they had brought their boats to the land, in other words, after they'd had this amazing encounter with the Lord, they forsook all and they followed him. If you look at every great patriarch and matriarch in the scriptures, you'll see that they simply obeyed and they forsook all. You look at Abraham. He forsook all. He left his father's house, went to a land that God would show him. Look at Moses. He forsook all and confronted Pharaoh. And then the list goes on. Ruth forsook Moab and followed Naomi into Bethlehem. King David 
forsook his house and, and being comfortable <laughs> and followed the Lord. Yes, he went through the wilderness, but he was one of the greatest kings that ever set foot on the planet outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. Person after person, the Apostle Paul forsook his understanding of God and moved into the era of the dispensation of grace and disclosed that to the Gentiles. Person after person who forsook all shook a town, city, or region. And my prayer is, church, for your life, that you too would forsake all and follow him as he leads you and guides you into this next season. I, I would say, not even season, this next era, this next era of your life. From now on, you will never ever be the same again. That is my prayer for you. Rachel, that's my prayer for you. Hannah, that's my prayer for you. Jesse, that's my prayer for you. What's your brother's name? Joshua. That's my, ooh, that's a great name. Praise God. It's my prayer for you, young man. In Jesus' name. Amen. Nancy and Alex, my prayer for you. Amen. Mags, Paul, love you. That's my prayer for you. Amen. And for this church. From now on. Everybody say, from now on. From now on. I, will I will forsake all. And I will follow him. I will follow him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Father. Let's lift our hands. Father, thank you for every person here. Oh, hallelujah. God, we worship you. We honor you. Lord, I know that you've got great and mighty things in store for every one of these people here today. Lord, I thank you that you're going to take the boat of their life and you're going to show them things that are going to astonish them in this next era. That's my prayer today. And as you do that, from now on, you shall carry them into their best days. Days of health, days of prosperity, days of victory. I know it might be tough, but there's always victory at the door when God is in our boat. From now on, from now on, you shall move forward in your calling. Not just your career, but in your calling. And yes, some of you shall be misunderstood. As you begin to flow in the boat with Jesus, you'll be misunderstood. But when they see the catch that comes up, oh, and they're standing on the shorelines watching, they too shall come into the deep. But you must go forth, and you must go first as a catalyst, says the Holy Spirit, and be willing to be misunderstood. You shall go forth. I need you to go forth first, first. Hallelujah. He was the first born among many brethren, among many. The many came next, and you shall be the first, says the Lord. Do not be swayed to the right nor the left, but go forth in my power, go forth in my promise, and I shall do great and mighty things. From now on, from now on it shall look different. From now on the money shall be there. From now on, the provision will come. From now on, I'm shifting you out of lack into plenty, out of defeat into faith today. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Can we give the Lord a hand? Whoa! Amen. And lastly, the most important thing this morning, I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. As I said 25 years ago, he shook my life overnight to the core and he changed me. Oh, he changed me. And now I give all of my days to serve him, to love him, to go after him, to build his church. There's an opportunity at the door for you today. Jesus is here to get in your boat today. Will you let him in? Will you let him in to transform your life? The Bible says, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, if you declare with your mouth that He is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's how simple it is. A declaration of faith that He becomes your Lord and that you believe that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved today. And I'm going to ask you to put up your hand. If, if you're that person and you've not yet received Him into your heart, I'm going to ask you just to simply raise your hand. I want to pray with you today. 
as you receive Jesus into your heart, into your life, into the boat of your life as your Lord and Savior today. So come on, as the church is praying this morning and believing with me, is there anyone in this room this morning under the sound of my voice who doesn't know Jesus and wants to invite him into their life? Hello, this young man here, first hand up. Is there anyone like that? Any more people here? Raise your hand. Yes, this gentleman at the back. This young man here. This young lady here. Hallelujah. Come on. Anyone else? Anyone else want to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior? This will be the most monumental decision you ever make in your life. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, this young man here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Let's pray with him, church. Just repeat this prayer, this simple prayer with me, after me. Can we all say, Jesus, come into my heart today. I declare that you are Lord. And I declare that you rose from the dead. Come on, I declare that you rose from the dead. And I, and I thank you that you've come to wash me of my sin. That you've come to forgive me. That you've come to cleanse me. And that you've come so that I can have a relationship with you. From this day, I will follow you. From now on, Jesus, I will never be the same. Thank you, Jesus. You are Lord of my life. And everybody said amen and amen. Thank you, church. Love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great week. Oh, Lou, you're the man. Lead us in some worship, man. Thank you.
church, love you, love you. Worship team, fantastic today. I've got to shoot off. I've got a sound check at 2.30 in Leeds. Please pray for us as a church. Don't think I'm rude by leaving, but I just want to say I love you. I always adore coming to this church. It's very, very special. Have a fantastic week. Stay in faith. Amen. And the Lord will do something magnificent for you. I'm going to hand to Max. God bless you. his life. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that as he goes forward, Lord, in the place that you have, Lord, you have marked out for him and for Beth, Lord, and the family. We pray, Lord, that you will do amazing things there. Lord, we pray that your power will come upon them. Lord, we pray for the practicalities of the cafe, Lord. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that those things, Lord, will reach out to people, Lord, that they will come to know you over a coffee, Lord, as they speak in that place. Lord, I pray you will send, Lord, your your very, very unusual presence, Lord, and spirit, Lord, and things, Lord, will happen there that will be unprecedented, Father God, we pray. We thank you, Lord, that we are in an incredible time of harvest, and Lord, that we will work together, Lord, all of us in our boats, Father God. Help us, Lord, to launch out into the deep, Lord, where you have ordained for us individually, Lord. We thank you for this day. Lord, let us not forget this day, because your word has been delivered. And I pray, Lord, that we will walk forward, Lord, in the understanding of what you have placed as an arrow into our hearts today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you so much. If you, gain, if you put your hand up this morning, please, please come out. We'll pray, we'll pray with you. You can have a Bible. And uh, you know, the best thing you can have in your life in this day and age is the Word of God. It is the only thing that will really, really get you through and let you understand why you are here on this planet.